Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening pleasure. With lyrics by Marilyn Williams and music by Matty Malvin. So, hold on to your chairs, folks. Right. Here they are. Mud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hey! All right, all right, Costello. Stop that yelling. Where have you been all afternoon? Oh, Abbott, I went to my Uncle Joe Basso's wedding. He married a bearded tattoo lady in the first... He's a tattooed lady. Yeah, Uncle Joseph, he's always been crazy about jungle pictures. <laughs> but I knew he was going to marry a fortune teller killer told me for $10. <laughs> All right, Simon, let's go. He's rich. Well, listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. 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 All right, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Please say I'm a dumb for <laughs> Wait a minute. Miss Rose, you mean to tell me that a fortune teller... <laughs> well, I didn't like you now. Oh, he's going to straighten it out. <laughs> you mean to tell me that a fortune teller charges $10 just to read your mind? No, $1 for reading my mind and $9 for finding it. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. What does Uncle Joe do for a living? Well, he's a babysitter. Uh, how did he get started as a babysitter? Well, one night a woman a woman asked him to sit with her baby, and then she went out and never came back. Uh, who was the woman? His first wife. Uh, <laughs> that's awful. Yes, at 25 cents an hour, she owes him $12,000. Is your babysitter? I'll say. One night he was sitting with a baby, and the kids swallowed a bottle of DTT. My goodness. What did Uncle Joe do? Well, he threw the baby over his shoulder and burped him. What, ha- what happened? The kid killed every fly within 10 miles. <laughs> Well, there's a sample of a high-grade nonsense you'll be hearing for the next half hour. Before we get back to it, listen to this. Did you know that any listener may now have an opportunity to appear as a contestant on Break the Bank? That's right, any listener. As you probably know, ABC's Break the Bank is that very popular Friday night quiz show where contestants try for a jackpot which is always worth at least $1,000 and often much more. Well, recently, Break the Bank inaugurated a new feature whereby listeners are eligible to enter their names in a giant wishbowl. Winners will not only get an opportunity to break the bank, but they also receive free airplane or railroad transportation for two to and from New York as available. In addition, each wishbowl winner will live in a suite in the famous New York Hotel from Friday until Sunday. And he or she will be given $150 spending money besides any amount received on the show. For all the details on this wonderful wishbowl here, Break the Bank when it's broadcast over most ABC stations tomorrow night. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Even my new girl from Texas, way back there. <laughs> that's her in the third row with the red dress on. What do you think of her, Abbott? Costello. That's your new girl? That's her. Brother, she is the ugliest, <laughs> most repulsive, <laughs> most stupid looking dame I've ever seen. <laughs> She's even got warts on her nose. <laughs> you can talk louder, Rabbit. She's deaf, too. <laughs> How can you possibly be interested in a girl like that? I don't know, Abbott. Her face haunts me. Everywhere I go, I see her face. I see her face when I'm awake. I see her face when I'm asleep. I even see her face when I get and to go to get my car washed at the wash rack. <laughs> I do too. I just made. How can you see her face when you take your car to the wash rack? She works there. She's on hubcaps. <laughs> How did you ever get acquainted with this girl? She wrote me a fan letter. <laughs> 
it's one of my millions of women picture fans. Well, you ought to get out of pictures, Costello. I can't have it. I just point my many millions of women fans. Millions? Mm -hmm. Millions? Millions? Well, thousands of women would be disappointed. Thousands of women? There are hundreds of women who would feel badly about it. Did you say hundreds? My mother would raise Cain. <laughs> Why don't you stop running around and get yourself engaged with some nice girl, you know. Do you know how to get engaged? Oh, yes, I heard it on the radio. They said if you want to get engaged, use Woodbury soap. So I bought 12 cases. Did you get engaged? Heck no, I was so busy washing, I didn't have time. <laughs> Will you please talk, then? Whatever happened to that uh, little red-headed uh, manager you were going with? He insulted me, Abbott. Highly insulted me. What do you mean? Hmm. For my birthday, she gave me a Boy Scout knife. Well, that's not an insult. Sure. Anybody knows I wouldn't knife a Boy Scout. Oh, right? <laughs> stop. I suppose you've got a date with some silly girl again tonight. I can't go out tonight, Abbott. I lost my wallet. Are you sure you lost your wallet? Yeah. Uh, you'd better look in your pockets again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Nope. Nope. No wallet, but here's a note. What does the note say? It says, you lost your wallet last night. You can have it back by calling 8835 Sunset Boulevard. See it. Bring a friend. My roommate is reading this over my shoulder. <laughs> Evidently, that note is from two girls. Forget about it. And quit running around with women. Why don't you take up tennis or golf? Oh, tennis or golf? Yes. Don't you know what good, clean fun is? No. What good is I... I play golf every day. This afternoon, I played 18 holes with Hedy Lamar. How that girl, her, that girl handles her iron. How is she with the woods? I, I don't know. She stayed out, out on the fairway the whole day. <laughs> uh, show me where it says that in the script. I know. Get back over there. Where you get that kind of dialogue? Never mind. <laughs> Very, very clever laughing. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> well, just never mind. I'm entitled to tell a joke once in a while. We've got lots of jokes in my family. That was... <laughs> that was one of my father's jokes. Who are you, one of your mother's jokes? I... <laughs> I'm looking for Lou Costello. I represent the Father's Day Committee of Cucamonga. I'm Lou Costello. Oh. What, what, what does the Father's Day Committee want with me? The people of Cucamonga have elected you as the Father of the Year of Cucamonga. This ain't Father's Day, and I don't even live in Cucamonga. That's good. The farther you stay away from Cucamonga, the better we like it. <laughs> I've seen that fellow's face before. I'll tell you where you can see it again. Where? Any Thursday at the State Unemployment Insurance Office. <laughs> Starting this Thursday. Hi, that's crack, Costello. I don't have to work. I'm the most independent man in town. Uh, what makes you so independent? I got a used car for sale. <laughs> that shut you up, Costello. You better watch out. Watch out that you don't wind up uh, at that un unemployment office. Yourself. Ah, don't you worry about that, Abbott. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about working. My girl got a job this week with the Los Angeles Bus Company. Your girl is a lady bus driver? Sure, she started Monday. She opens the door, she takes the fare, she makes the change, she gives out transfers, she calls up the street, she tells the people to move back on the bus. Yes. Next week, she's going to learn to drive. What? <laughs> well, uh, have you got a driver's license? Yes, I've got a junior driver's license. What's a junior driver's license? That only allows you to hit midgets. Uh, <laughs> the California driver's laws are very strict, especially about the death scene zone. Now, when you see a pedestrian crossing the safety zone, what do you do? The same as all the other California drivers? I step on a gas and face them up on a sidewalk where they belong? <laughs> all right, Mr. Williams, I'll take care of everything. All right, all right, reporters. Come on, sweep up the floor, disinfect the microphone, clean up the place, and throw out that garbage can over there. Uh, wait. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Garbage can? That's Blue Costello, my friend. I was right the first time. Throw that garbage can out of here. <laughs> Another thing. What's the idea of cooking corned beef and cabbage in this studio? Smells terrible. Nobody was cooking corned beef and cabbage. This is the Abbott and Costello program. Hmm. Can... <laughs> <laughs>
Confusing, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Oh, not when you like corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> that did it. Now I'm complaining to the president of ABC. What right has this knot-headed knickerboot got to come in here and try to disrupt our program? Now, just a minute. Just a minute. Knot-headed? Are you trying to create the impression that I'm bald? <laughs> Brother, if you ain't bald, somebody give you a haircut with a bare midriff. <laughs> Why, well, I guess I'll straighten this out. What are you doing in this studio? Sir Rabbit, I work for ABC. I've worked here for 12 years. I run the elevator. Now, uh, wait a minute. There's no elevator in the building. Go on, loudmouth. Tell the boss. Make me lose my job. <laughs> Well, don't stand there. Tell him. Have him kick me off the payroll. Oh, now, just a minute, mister. Aren't you ashamed of yourself accepting money for doing nothing? Accepting money for doing nothing? How long have you been in radio? Ten years. Look who's talking. <laughs> now, listen, you. I mean, this, this guy is not only bald, he's ugly, he's broken down, but in spite of all that, there's something about him that he poked him. <laughs> Why, I just tell Uh, mister, why have you interrupted our show? Sir Abbott, I have a very important announcement to make. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Broadcasting Company and the sponsors of the Abbott and Costello Show proudly present, direct from her recent triumphs in London, England, that great singing star, Miss Marilyn Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Floyd. Floyd? <laughs> well, la di da. Floyd! Uh, leave him alone, Costello. Miss Williams, welcome to our program. And I'm sure our listeners are going to love you. And I hope you will like me and my pop. But, old chap, I think you're top hole. And I think the fellow is positively ripping. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have worn those tight pants. <laughs> Costello, that's just an English expression. The English have a different customs than ours, you know. What do you mean? Well, for instance, in this country, if a girl sneezes, you say Gesundheit. If an English girl sneezes, you uh, you kiss her. That's all I want to know. <laughs> Mr. Costello, ma'am, I didn't sneeze. Why wait until the last minute? <laughs> My, Mr. Costello, why did you ever learn to pucker your lips to a point like that? I used to thread needles for my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Miss Williams, we have some gifts for you to bid. Bid you welcome to America. First, please accept this beautiful diamond ring. Here, I'll slip it on your finger. Oh, it's divine. You may kiss my finger. Hmm. Now, may I place this beautiful bracelet on your arm? Thank you. You may kiss my wrist. And now, this lovely necklace. Oh, thank you. You may kiss me on my neck. All right, Costello, now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I pass. Why? <laughs> I, I bought a pair of shoes. <laughs> You're so droll, Mr. Costello. But for being so nice to me, I'm going to write to His Majesty and have him make you a knight of the bar. Please, don't do it. Why not? You think I'm going to fight England and back every Saturday night just to stop the king's back? You're not. <laughs> it's easy to see that you've never been to England, Mr. Costello. Well, yes, I have. Here's a copy of the London Times. My picture's on one side and the king's picture's right next to it. So it is. Do you see what it says on my picture? Costello comes to England and tells his famous duke. But look what it says under the king's picture. What? God save the king. Uh, Miss Williams, did you have a nice trip here to America? Oh, rather. Robin. You know, I crossed the Atlantic on the Queen Mary. Mm hmm. I didn't know the old girl could swim that far. <laughs> But before I get too thick, let's interrupt it for another reminder on a serious subject. 
Did you know there's a network quiz show where listeners compete for a big jackpot prize by telephoning the program? That's right. The listeners phone in collect. And that program is What's My Name, broadcast over most of these ABC stations each Saturday night. Here's how it works. At the end of What's My Name, you hear the voice of a famous personality. Then listeners of a certain selected city, and it may be yours, are invited to telephone in the name of the owner of that voice. The first correct answer wins the jackpot. It's a lot of fun, even if your city isn't the selected one. But the fun doesn't start with a jackpot question. You'll also enjoy hearing studio contestants play What's My Name, as MCs Arlene Francis and Carl Frank post the questions. They pretend to be famous people and give such a clues as to their identity. The yes, for Swell Quiz Fun, don't miss What's My Name, heard over most of these stations Saturday night. Now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Come on, Abbott, now let's get going. Now, wait a minute, Costello. Let's turn on the spotlight. Let's turn it on on our singing gal from England. Oh, that's great for us, and it's great for everybody listening. Here she is, folks, Marilyn Williams with Maddie Malnick's music. <laughs> months away. Why did, why did you say Merry Christmas? That's best material, Abbott. <laughs> now, if anybody says Merry Christmas on the radio, they stole it from us. Right. <laughs> Don't be silly, Costello. Nobody can steal our material. Yes, so? Well, for your information, Mr. Milton Burrow did a joke last week that we're going to use next Thursday. <laughs> well, how can you say that, inferring that we would stoop so low as to use other comedians? Joke. Well, why, we can go on for years and years with our own stuff. Why don't we do it? Okay. <laughs> Let's go. You start. Okay. Here I go. All right. Hey, Abbott! Talk, Ben Costello. Well, that didn't take long. Let's get back to the other guy's joke now. <laughs> <laughs> now, the trouble with you is that instead of thinking up new jokes, you spend all your time chasing girls. I saw you last night with that redhead. Yes, what a girl, have it all night long. She gets two on my ear off. You, you mean she talks too much? Nope, she just shoot my ear off. <laughs> I understand she's a Spanish dancer. Yep, she does a very unusual dance. She dances around the brim of a Mexican hat. She dances all around the brim of the hat and then kisses it with her heels. Well, what, what's unusual about that? Lots of Spanish dancers dance on the top of a Mexican hat. Well, it's still on the Mexican head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Castello, no, no one but a silly girl like that would go out with you. Now, take me. I get the better looking girls because I'm handsome. Have it, I don't like to hurt your feelings, but since you brought it up, I gotta tell you, you are the youngest man I ever saw. 
I'm ugly. You're so ugly that it makes me wish I had the hiccups so I could look at you and get scared. I... <laughs> well, anyway, you've got to admit I'm a pretty classy dresser. Uh-uh, uh-uh. 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 Come to think of it, Abbott, you were wearing pinchback suits long before any other fellow. That's right. And long afterwards, too. Uh... <laughs> I'm the one with class. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm the one with class. Why, when I went to school, the girls used to flock around me like flies around a pot of honey. Yes, and I'll have to admit, you haven't changed much. I haven't at that, have I? No, you've lost a little of the honey, but you still, still got, got the pot. <laughs> Costello, Abbott's nephew, Norman, why do you keep coming in here every week? Well, I want to ask you something, Mr. Costello. My mother told me that if I, if I watch you... Yeah, son, Abbott, throw and through. <laughs> well, give the boy a chance. What's on your mind, Norman? I want to ask you something, Mr. Costello. My mother told me that if I watch you all the time, before I knew it, I'd be an actor just like you. You think she's right? Yes, your mother is right, Norman. You might end up being just like me. No kidding, and I thought you'd just tell me that to scare me. <laughs> That's a nice boy, folks. The teacher told me that it was only it would only take two more years to make a moron out of him. <laughs> Have it. Why don't you keep that bum home? Costello, don't you call that actor a bum. Don't you call that bum an actor. Right? <laughs> no, never mind that. Norman stays on this show. He's got sex appeal. And don't forget that we have 200 women in this audience Every week, and every one of them wants to be loved. You mean in there and tell me that there are 200 women out there right now that want to be loved? Yes. And I'm at one of the time. <laughs> That's what... <laughs> That's the how can you be so stupid? Every day you add more stupidity to your ignorance. How do you do it? I take vitamins. Right? <laughs> and my uncle Mike takes vitamins too. We're worried about him, Abbott. All day long, he runs around the house and tackles. He thinks he's a chicken. Well, wait a minute. If he thinks he's a chicken, why don't you get him out of the house and, and, and send him to a hospital? We would, but we need the eggs. I... <laughs> oh, thanks. Hey, Abbott, the fan letter from one of my listeners. Yeah, I'll read it. I, I think I will. Go ahead. Actually, I'm going to read it. <laughs> Dear Luke Costello, they told me that sounds like a burning building, doesn't it? <laughs> Dear Luke Costello, I have been listening to your Sam Shovel Detective series, and I want to say you are wonderful. Last week when you played Sam Shovel, it was so thrilling, I busted out in Goose Temple. I'm coming over to see you in person tonight. Costello, someone outside to see you. Who is it? A goose with Temple. <laughs> What is your Sam Shovel Detective story for tonight? Tonight, I will do one of my most famous cases. I call it the case of the murdered florist, or they caught him with his plants down. <laughs> yes, I'm Sam Shovel, private detective. It's warm in my little office. It's been warm and sticky all afternoon. On my way to the office, I ran into Harry the Mug, Joe the Mug, and Frankie the Mug. It's really been a muggy day. <laughs> when I got here this morning, I took the elevator up to my office. Oh, Mr. Shovel! Mr. Shovel, I'm the elevator boy! Will you please give me back my elevator? <laughs> that elevator boy is a shifty character. Yesterday, he was arrested for feeding pigeons in a park. He was feeding them to his family. <laughs> I love pigeons. I had a pet pigeon once. My poor pigeon had trouble walking. He was people toes. <laughs> it's time to get to work on my latest case. I walk over to my roll top desk. Get Zeus. It's terrible. Someone ate the rolls off the top of the desk. <laughs> I turn towards the window. A tall girl walks past. I see her face go by the window. 
I know she must be a tall girl. My office is on the ninth floor. <laughs> I peeked out of the window. What a girl. What a figure. She'd be perfect for a man. Too bad she's a girl. <laughs> Suddenly I hear a sneaky footsteps approaching. It's Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad. He's tiptoeing into the office. Abbott's a cheap thief. The only thing he ever tips is his toes. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel. Hello, Lieutenant Abbott. My bosom, I mean my bosom friend. <laughs> Beginning to sound like Abbott and Costello. Heaven forbid. Huh? Sam Shovel, you've got to help me. You must help me. Please, lady, stop trying. Please stop trying. What's the matter? Can't you stand to see a woman scared? I don't mind seeing him, but you're putting out my cigar. What's the trouble, lady? It's my husband. His life is in danger. Sam Shovel, Sam You've got to keep me alive. I've got to live till Sunday afternoon. I've got to stay alive till Sunday afternoon. Why must you live till Sunday afternoon? Stop the music they call me, and I know the name of the mystery song. <laughs> I know the name of the mystery song. You do? What is it? Attention, American woman, will you? The name of the mystery song is... I'll take his watch. <laughs> this is a strange case, Sam. That man was about to tell the name of the mystery song on the stop the music when he was shot. I wonder who done it. Well, this is surely a deduction, Lieutenant Abbott. But there was one man who'd had a good motive. Who? Fred Allen. Oh, get up! Don't go away, folks. Our mad men aren't through with you yet. Right now, they want you to hear this. Here's a story to will interest you fight fans to listen to Cavalcade of Sports at Friday nights over most ABC stations. It's the story behind the first broadcast of a heavyweight championship bout, the one between Jack Dempsey and George Carpentier. Radio was then in its infancy, and temporary broadcasting station was set up at the nearest railroad depot in a shack used by Pullman Porters. The producer announced that the show entered the arena early in order to set up his microphone. However, because he'd already handed in his ticket, he couldn't leave, and so he spent the entire day without food. However, the now famous broadcast went off all right. Certainly was a far cry from ABC's present-day regular Friday night fight cast, in which technical problems are well mapped out in advance, with exciting bouts described by experts Don Dunphy and Bill Corum. Here's a vivid account of this week's most important fight on Cavalcade of Sports tomorrow night. Now for a final word from ABC's Abbott and Costello show. Well, Costello, you want me to drive you home? Not tonight, Abbott. I'm going out with two girlfriends of mine. Why well, take both of them out at the same time? Well, one of the girls, every time I try to kiss her, she says don't. And the other one, every time I try to kiss her, she says stop. Then why bother taking them both out? Put them together. They say don't stop. Oh, good night, folks. Good night, everybody. This is Thursday night, and it's time for another great Abbott and Costello show. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Bander. And featuring Marilyn Williams and Matty Malnick in his orchestra. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.